When I first came to this side of the Philippines, I knew little about the discomfort of travel. Illiterate to the sacrifices of untapped landscapes. There is nothing like returning to a place that remains unchanged to find the ways in which you yourself have altered. Palawan, November 2019. An outlying province whose distance is actually quite familiar to me. It's not hard to understand why it is I'm here, but perhaps the greater question is why I commuted the 10,000 miles to come back. The year before, I made my first trip to Palawan and documented my experience in the towns and islands of El Nido. Remarkably, though I had traveled most of Southeast Asia by that point, it was the first time that I truly understood the notion that sometimes you have to forfeit simple comforts to be surrounded by raw beauty. With little to no signal, Wi-Fi, or accommodations worth a damn, El Nido challenged my roots as a traveler roaming this side of the continent, and I forever loved it for that. But I was always left with a question. What about nearby Caron? You see, anyone, perhaps maybe even you yourself, who's planning a trip to Palawan, always debates between El Nido or Caron. The cane and Abel of the province, you can scour through conflicting message boards for hours and still come to the most basic conclusion. That you need to visit both to truly know which one you, and not some random Aussie travel blogger, prefer. So I'm back, on another rinky-dink propeller plane out of Cebu, descending into a place I have no expectation for. Off the bat, you can tell from the smooth hills and farmlands that this isn't the dense jungles of El Nido. In fact, geographically, these two aren't very similar at all. El Nido is located on the northern sliver of the lengthy island of Palawan, an island that stretches down close to Borneo. Caron Town, meanwhile, is actually located on the infinitely smaller island of Busuanga, but the main draw is the nearby Caron Island, an island that's only partially open to the public and sparsely inhabited and controlled by the native Tagbanwa tribe. In essence, you come to Caron to stay on Busuanga to jump off to the actual Caron Island or the other minor ones for the day. Add the fact that there are basically no sandy beaches here and you begin to understand why I chose El Nido last year over this place. On paper, there's just no comparison. But the truth of a story isn't just read, it's felt. I hop on a screeching trike riding shotgun down the bumpy roads of Busuanga. I like to think it's always a worthwhile experience to ride around in any taxi in motorbike form. To me, it's a simple pleasure in this side of the world. And where am I going? To the thick of things. To Caron Town proper. And this is where things start to look up for the underdog. There's simply no other way around it. There is so much more going on in this town. The intoxicating smell of pork being cooked in the most random spots. Trikes whizzing by almost as if to remind you this ain't your typical sleepy Filipino village. 
There are rooftops inexplicably built on the foundation of shops and homes to enjoy the view of that island that you're undoubtedly here for. Just where you want to be to down a few too many $3 cocktails and wonder, on your island getaway, would you rather a town that bites back or a sleepy village filled with hippies? Me? Eh, I don't like hippies, but I do enjoy some fine Pinoy delicacies, and the Island Boy Grill is the best place in town to partake in raising one's cholesterol with them after dark. I don't think I've said this yet on this show, but here it goes. Filipino food is hands down, bar none, the single most underrated cuisine not just in Asia, but in the entire world as a whole. It just doesn't get the love it desperately deserves. I mean, look at this pork sisig. Minced pork parts served on a sizzling platter with chilies, onion, and an egg that scrambles when stirred on the top. Pure, evil, delicious. How about some crispy lechon kowali, dipped in vinegar, chili, and onions? Why, yes. I'd love some, and I'd take that any day over any bit of sushi or a bowl of pho. Don't agree? At me. After dinner, I take a stroll around town to walk off that shooting pain in my left arm. It's dark, very dark, the byproduct of a blackout, something that's actually quite common on most far-flung Filipino islands. I'm no stranger to these, but this one, this one is remarkable. Regressing to our collective roots marks the innocence of this moment. The coziness of walking through a town dimly lit by individual candlesticks propped up in every home and every business. It's a virtue I feel in traversing through a simple kind of life. Uncorrupted, as I often wish life could be. So, the thing you'll undoubtedly do when you come to Corona. The inevitable island tour package. I did one last year in El Nido, so I figure, why not go and then compare the two? If you've seen this show before, you know my feelings about these tours are mixed. Some can be good, and some, like in Borneo, can be dreadful. This time, however, I'll also be renting a private boat on another day. But more on that later in the show. So off I go taking the quick trip from Corone Town Pier to Corone Island. Now, once you're here, you'll notice almost all tour operators will offer you packages with preset itineraries that often look like this. My theory when booking these type of packages is simple. Always go for tour A and never, ever book the overbloated itinerary found in an ultimate tour. Why? Because the more places you visit for the day, the less time you'll have to enjoy each one, and to me, nothing is worse than being rushed on my vacation. And that brings us to the first and most popular stop, Gayangan Lake. So for the sake of saving you much time, I'll tell you that this ain't the best spot on the tour. The water is nice, yes, but due to safety precautions, you're not allowed to swim far or without a life vest because it's easier to sink in the mixed lake and seawater. Nice water, beautiful scenery, but a small, crowded, and restricted space. Take your pics, have a splash, and go kind of place. So I move on. Now, the price of one of these tours is roughly $30 per person, and it's really not a bad deal if you consider that it's a whole day trip and lunch is included. 
And that lunch isn't your typical run-of-the-mill fare. No, no, it's actually something to look forward to when you're burning up in the blistering Palawan sun and you haven't eaten since the tour picked you up from your hotel at 7 a.m. So around noon, the captain docks on the tiny coral garden island and calls for lunch. On today's menu, grilled fish, some roasted veg, the ubiquitous mouth-watering grilled pork belly bits, otherwise known as tocino, and of course, no Pinoy meal is complete without adobo, this time made with chicken. The fact that this was somehow cooked on a makeshift wooden boat speaks volumes about these guys. And their food doesn't just hit the spot, it makes me truly happy. Happy that I'm fortunate enough to enjoy this meal on a little wooden hut overlooking what really is a utopia on earth. Just one of those moments you try and drag on as long as you can. With everyone back on board, the captain sets sail to what turned out to be my favorite location of this tour. A place that actually looks nicer in person than any 8K wallpaper you download to your computer. That wonderful place is the Twin Lagoons. Now before I get into that, it is worth noting that I actually had two more stops after this one. CYC Beach and Barracuda Lake. I'll just tell you that CYC was okay, and Barracuda was surprisingly relaxing. I actually enjoyed the lake itself more than Kayangan, and I wouldn't skip it and its razor-sharp, body-impaling cars if I were you. So as the boat pulls up to the crystal-clear, shallow waters that feed into the narrow lagoon, I get the sense that this is the spot I've been yearning for. You know when you find yourself in a place where you feel like every single frame you're looking at doesn't seem real? As if you've been immersed into a painting that has somehow become a reality. Pictures and videos not doing justice to the imagery, your eyes are so humbly capturing. As I kayak gently through a lagoon that is perhaps one of the few places on earth where you can traverse through fantasy, it became a place I did my very best to never leave. Eventually though, reality kicked in and that meant I had to set sail. Back to base and seemingly an eternity from a spot that captivated my eyes. With the day settling down and the boat cutting through the sea, I sat on the edge, deaf to the breeze. There was only room for one thing in my mind. Another early morning downpour on Busuanga. The resort I'm staying in is quaint and has everything I need, but it's far, inconveniently far. I made the unusual choice of booking away from a town this time. And as nice as this resort is, my suggestion to you would be to stay in Corone Town proper. It's central, lively, and you don't need to find a ride and drive 20 minutes into the outskirts and farms to get to your room. If you were wondering, accommodation options aren't amazing or plentiful in Corona, but they sure do beat El Nido. I've got a little time to kill, so once the monsoon passes, I figured I'd go back to town, this time for a hike. That's right, a hike. That's because overlooking Coron Town is the little viewpoint known as Mount Tapias. And seeing as though everyone recommends you do this, I figured, hell, what's a roughly 720 perfectly cemented steps climb to me anyway? Okay, so to put things in perspective, it's not a very high hike, but it just rained, it just poured all the steam that the ground is letting loose makes this kind of decent, reasonable hike 
makes it very, very exhausting. Very, very sweaty. Looks like I just showered. <sighs> and I didn't. I honestly appreciate the dual purpose I'm getting out of this activity. I get to see some nice views while simultaneously burning off the excessive amounts of pork I've been eating lately. Once I get to the top, I can only wonder how backbreaking it must have been to properly pave this climb. Not to mention the commitment it took to erect that cross and the giant Hollywood-esque letters. That kind of dedication is truly admirable. As if to tell anyone who comes, we care about this town and we're glad to share it with you. As I take in the views that would ultimately be better during the sunset, I do have a few things to get off my chest. You know, I've always despised the typical YouTuber travel vlogger format. That is, drone shots, tropical house music, guy's girlfriend running around in her bikini in slow motion playing with her hair. To me, that's cheap. That's just bad travel. It doesn't really show you how a place is. It doesn't tell you anything. It doesn't share a story. So I'm going to be real with you. This hike right here, not sure if it's worth it. Despite what any travel blogger may write online, it just doesn't seem to be something that if you're really, really just short on time, it's not something that you want to waste an hour and a half to two hours doing. If you've been eating a lot of sisig, a lot of crispy pata, you feel hefty, you want to go for a run and feel a little bit better about yourself, so a couple of abs show, sure, come. Go up this, take some pictures, post it on Instagram, but otherwise, you could probably skip it. It's my final day in Coron, so I've saved the best for last. Something I recommend anyone visiting Palawan do, budget permitting, is rent your own boat with a captain. There's no itinerary, no massive groups of passengers, no time constraints. It's wherever you want to go at whichever pace you'd like. You'd be a fool not to do this. Today's itinerary is simple. Wherever the hell I want to go for as long as I want. As Captain Roldan pulls out of the fisherman village on route to Corone Island, I get a glimpse of the real Corone. The humble huts never shown by those typical vloggers. A reminder that there's more meaning, more to understand in this place than just some emerald waters and pretty beaches. I want to make today about taking my time, about soaking everything in. So I've planned just two spots on the itinerary, and first up, a quick dip at Banyol Beach on the tip of Corone Island. Something about these little huts poking out of the slick vertical limestone gives this beach a Swiss Family Robinson feel to it. Like that daydream you repeatedly have about getting away from it all and ending up under a palm tree sipping on a coconut. The same dream where this is my home and the shallow ocean is my front yard. But knowing how I do things, I've left the very best for the last part of the last day. Right beside Lake Ayangan lies a quiet place. A place relatively unbothered by the hordes of island tours that swarm to the lake as if to be a treasure hiding in plain sight. For me, this single greatest spot out of all the little nooks and crannies I've been to in all of Palawan, the Green Lagoon. So you can do the public tour, you're gonna deal with 10, 12 people, you're gonna have limited time in each stop, maybe 20, 30, 40 minutes in each stop. Or you can do a private tour like this one explore a place where not a lot of vessels can actually go into, and you're gonna have a better time overall. 
is definitely a way to go. A lot more expensive, obviously. Yeah, it's unreal, man. It's unreal. It's important to note why it is that this place is so special to me. Though the Twin Lagoon might be more impressive as a whole, it's constantly flooded with passengers docking off their boats. This lagoon, however, is bliss. Small, private, tucked away in a little cove, I stayed for hours mostly completely alone, admiring my own private piece of a dream come true. Taking in every jagged rock that seems to jolt out of the unspeakably surreal emerald green waters. The same glistening waters that invite me to dive into and swim in time and again. The Green Lagoon had become, in some corner of my mind, etched into my library of memories, a sacred place of innocence where my life was pure. It never hurts to revisit a place that you felt you didn't completely understand. Part of the process of getting to know yourself as a traveler is knowing where your curiosity lies, if you feel you have more left to uncover in any given spot. Palawan is one of the few places I can say that I'd travel to the other side of the earth to keep digging. That's because if I didn't, I would have never known how a simple town with no beach could rival the tropical poster boy that is El Nido. So if you're wondering which one of the two is better to visit, my answer to you is, do you have the time to dig into both? I can tell you I got 